Hi, good day. Welcome to our lesson for today. Today we're going to be talking about economic related discussions and then I just want to make sure that this unavoidable topic in economics is handled first so that as we move on we can have a base to fall back on. And so pay attention, get your writing materials and take note as much as you can because we're going to move on a very, very, very deep level. So thank you. Today we'll be discussing the topic theory of demand. <coughs> this topic demand, I think for me, has everything to do with economics analysis. That is the base, the fulcrum of our understanding and study of economics. So pay attention as we go. Now for this particular lesson, we're going to define demand and define a demand curve and schedule, define or state the laws of demand and supply, and then determine the equilibrium price using graph and functions. All right, before we move into the meaning of demand, we need to understand some basics about demand. The demand theory, as we know, describes the way that changes in the quantity of a good or service demanded by consumers affect its price in the market. The theory states that the higher the price of a product is, all the other things being equal, the less of it will be demanded. That is inferring a downward looping demand curve. That is what this theory tries to make us understand. Likewise, the more demand that occurs, the greater the price will be in a given supply. So demand theory places primary primacy on the demand side of supply-demand relationship. So having known this, we look at what demand is. Demand is the quantity of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at a given price in a given time period. This is a little bit different from what we call effective demand. Of course, they are similar, but effective demand in this case is a desire, of a, of a, a desire for a good backed up by the ability and willingness to pay for it at alternative prices within a given period of time. So it is not just willingness and able to buy, the ability to pay for it makes it what effective demand. So I want you to be very, very attentive as we move down. Now, demand, like we say, various quantities and prices. It means that you must have a list of demand share activities within a set time, like we all mentioned. It might be like a week or a month or a year, as the case may be. That means if you want to categorize all you've done within that time frame, you have what a table that lists out what you've done on a particular commodity. So what we call demand schedule now is what? That demand schedule is a table showing the relationship between prices and their various quantities of a commodity that will be demanded at a given period of time. So it's a table that shows this demand defined earlier from one to the last commodity demanded, and is the quantity of the quantity demanded. Now it may also be defined as a table which shows the different quantities of a commodity that will be demanded at various prices at the given period of time. Now there are two types of demand schedule. Number one is an individual demand schedule, while number two is a market demand schedule. Here you will have what we call a, a demand schedule for an individual. You can see it's called a family, a Smith family demand schedule for babysitting hours. That is per hour, how much are you paid per hour? Now you see price per hour is $40 when you have babysit for 55 hours, or oh yes, 55 hours per month. 
you that's just go down you look at it you can use one to draw your demand curve but that's what you have there this is a typical example of a demand schedule that we can be of any product not necessarily this it can be of tangible product this one is service so you see how it is outlined <coughs> so what's an individual demand schedule this is a table showing the different quantities of a commodity that an individual consumer that is one person would buy at various prices in a given period of time. For example, the table we saw earlier on, or the one we'll see after now, is one person's demand schedule, that's Mr. B's demand schedule for Gary from Monday to Friday. So on Monday, he bought Gary per bag, he paid 100 naira for 10 bags, or 10 cups, let's put it out. He paid 100 naira per bag, okay, and bought uh, 10 of it. On Tuesday, he bought 20 bags for 80 naira. On Wednesday, he bought 30 bags for 60 naira. On Thursday, 40 bags for 40 naira, and then Friday, 50 bags for 20 naira. So this is what the record of how much Mr. Obi has purchased Gary from Monday to Friday. This is what we are talking about when we say uh, demand is what is the quantities of a commodity that an individual is willing and able to buy at various prices and quantities at the, at the given period of time. So the time is Monday to Friday here. So from the above, you see that 100 naira for 10 bags were bought and so till the last one, as you can see. That is Mr. B's individual demand schedule. Then the next we have is a market demand schedule. What is a market demand schedule? This can be defined as a table showing the different quantities of a commodity that all consumers of the commodity will buy at various prices in a given period of time. So a market demand schedule is also known as what the aggregate demand schedule or composite demand schedule or total demand schedule. These terms that are used here is to up, give, update you on different names or terms that can be used to refer to a market demand schedule. So anyone you see at any time, make sure you don't forget that they are talking about the same thing as market demand schedule. So <clears throat> let's see an example of market demand schedule. Now you can see the table below is the market demand schedule for Gary for Mr. Obi, Femi, and Toby, I'm uh, sorry, Tola. Now, what do we say is the aggregate? Remember, we say it's an aggregate uh, of yes, it's an aggregate demand schedule, meaning the sum of all individual demand schedule put together give us what the aggregation of the market demand. So you can see that here on Monday, yes, the bag of Gary was still 100 naira. Mr. Obit bought 10, Mr. Femi bought 15, and Tola bought 30. Altogether, total demand was 55 bags at 100 naira. That is how others order for Tuesday 20, 25, 40 for Obi, Femi, and Tola. Total demand for Gary on Monday and Tuesday was 85. That's how this market demand schedule is design or um, total so you don't make a mistake and say that ah why are we going to use all these figures to draw a demand schedule no a demand curve no you only use the price and the total quantity demanded to draw your demand schedule if you're in a demand graph if you have to do so now to go ahead with our knowledge on demand we have to understand what the demand curve is first of all we know uh, we, we introduce our knowledge on demand and then define demand and then talk about the curves and the schedules and now we're looking at the curve because from the schedule you will have a curve without the demand schedule you definitely will not have any curve as the case may be now this can be defined as a graph showing the relationship between prices and quantities demanded of a commodity at a given period of time a graph or a diagram that shows the relationship between prices of a commodity and its quantity demanded at a given period of time. So as price is rising, what is the reaction of demand? As price is falling, what is the reaction of demand? On the graph, you will see it in pictorial format. 
Now, it can also be defined as a diagrammatical or graphical representation of the demand schedule. True. So when you move the demand schedule data into a graph, you have what's called a demand curve. This is an example of what we are seeing. The demand curve we should do. On the right side of this image, you have a, a market demand schedule. All right, whatever quantity, whatever commodity is it that they were selling, when the commodity was zero dollar, people were having up to 24 units of it, just like that. When it became a dollar, they were buying 21 units of it, two dollar 18, three dollar 15, four, 12, and five, nine, six, and six quantity as well. That is the record for demand for the market for the time being. So you can see you need to be able to draw a graph for this. First of all, you outline your prices on the vertical axis, which is your y axis, and then the quantities on your horizontal, which is your x axis. You don't even need to, you can take a scale if you have to, but if you don't have to, you can actually outline these figures the way they appear. Prices from one to zero to six dollars, and the outputs demanded. You can use the same figures or just do a scale of five intervals. So that will help you to draw your graph, and then make sure you you apply the graphs at the point of tangency between price and quantity demanded. That will give you the graph you're looking at here. So this is a demand curve. From this schedule, you can see that it's a downward sloping demand curve. When price rises, demand quantity falls. When price falls, demand quantity what rises. So you can see that when the dollar was six, the quantity demanded was just six dollar. Uh, sorry, six quantities, six units. After the five, you can see there, you count rightward. You have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so you look at it. The next one after five, the line falls on word number six. That means the quantity demanded was six when price of the dollar of the, of the quantity was six dollars. The next quantity demanded was nine. You can see that before ten, the line fell on number nine, which means that is the next quantity demanded when the price of the dollar fell to five dollars. So you move down again, you have four dollars at 12 units demanded. You see, yes. after 10, you count one, two, that's 12. You see where the line fell. That is how you draw your graph. So you, after ta pointing the point of uh, tangency, you now draw a line across the points that you have. That will give you a demand curve, right? That is what you have. So this is a demand curve showing the demand schedule, market demand schedule of a particular period of time. Now the law of demand. This law actually has up to five, we have up to five laws of demand, but in this particular lesson we'll just consider the first law, which actually has two in one, because the third law is not the same, the third law is different. So this law here has two in one uh, laws. The first part of it is the first law, the second part of it is the second law. And what does the law say? This is often regarded as the first law, actually, which is the first part. The law of demand states that the higher the price, take note, the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded, and the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. That other part, the lower the price, is the second law of demand. Because the third law of demand says that the equilibrium price is the price that will equate demand with supply. That means the first two laws are stated here. The first part is when the price of the commodity goes up, the quantity demanded reward will fall. The second part is all things being equal, when the price of the commodity falls, the quantity demanded reward will rise. So that was the first two laws of demand today here, but they will not do much of on that. We'll dwell on it in our next lesson. So we'll have the five laws stated out so we can see exactly what the entire five laws of demand are all about. So now, I told you today we're going to be dealing on demand specifically. We now know what demand is. We know the schedule of demand. We know the curve. And then we've seen the law of demand. Now, we have to know the types of demand. Now, what are the types of demand? We have four basic types of demand. Four basic types of demand. The first in no particular order is what we have here, 
to call it joint or complementary demand. Joint or complementary demand. Now, it is called joint because the commodity in question that is demanded for cannot serve in isolation to meet the demand of the consumer. It has to come along with another type of product combine it together to meet the demand of the consumer. That's why it is called joint. Now, what does it mean? It is a demand for two or more commodities that will be used to satisfy the demand or the, the, the desires of the consumer. So if you look at the pictures you have there, you have car and gasoline, meaning that you cannot drive your car without fuel or diesel or any other spirit that it uses. That is why it's called a joint demand. You also have the printer and ink. You cannot produce any document without a printer and an ink, meaning one cannot serve in isolation. All right, so we have a shaving stick and a razor. You know, you cannot, put, you cannot shave without a razor, without a blade in a razor to be able to have yourself shaved up. So these are the things. Other examples abound. And you want to tell me that you cannot, uh, um, yes, you cannot drink a tea without sugar, no, but of course that can go. Without bread, of course that can go, but some people can drink tea without bread. So tea and bread are a joint demand to enjoy the meal for tea in the morning. So many other examples are bound for types of demand, talking about complementary or joint demand. When we mean complementary, one complements the other to meet the needs of the, of the consumer. Now we have competitive demand. This is a demand for goods that, are ha that have close substitutes for each other. Goods that can be used in place of the other to meet the desires of the consumer or to meet the needs of the consumer. For example, you have here on, your, on a picture, you have snacks being produced by Burger King and McDonald's. McDonald's have been known for lovely, delicious snacks being produced as well as Burger King. Those of you who have tasted the two will testify of their goodness. And so, if you are left with the choice to make between these two uh, snacks, I'm sure you won't be lost of choice. You want to take the two, but no, you can take just one. So that's why it is called a competitive demand, because the two goods can replace each other in meeting the needs of the consumer. So it is demand for products that, are hard, that have close substitutes or that, are, that can easily substitute one another. That's why it's called a competitive demand. Another example for this kind of demand is probably Coca-Cola and Pepsi because the demand for what to have a taste of Coca-Cola, or sorry, a taste of Coke, all right, uh, for your drink. So in this case, you cannot do it, uh, Coke alone cannot meet the demand of the people, but because there are other examples like Pepsi and other Coke-related uh, uh, products, you have a very big competition for the two or more of those products that can meet the need of the consumer equally. So that's why we have it as a competitive demand. We have composite demand here. Composite demand refers to the demand of a particular commodity that can serve more than one purpose or more than one need, that can meet more than one need of the consumer. So such a product are numerous, there are many in, in their own likes, but we have few of them here. We have butter. Butter can be used to eat bread. You put it in the bread and eat. You have butter can also be used to, to bake cake, to also produce bread, depending on you. And butter can also be used to, to fry, you can, to cook uh, some other meal. They can dissolve it and use it to cook meal. That's, it can serve two or more purposes. Now, we have yogurt too. Yogurt can be used to take uh, to drink in ordinary like that. You can also use it to, to, to make a salad like I was told. I don't know how to that is. You can also use salad uh, yogurt to to prepare other things. So yogurt can also serve as one. You also have milk, chocolate. They also serve more than one purpose. Cheese is also there. And again, you know, the most common that I want to use here is the palm tree. The palm tree in this, in this uh, case can give you many other products as in, all right? It can serve as uh, a source of wood. 
It can serve as a source of uh, building material. It can serve as a source of wine. It can serve as a source of broom, all right? It can serve as a source of shelter. The palm tree has so many things it can bring to you. So the palm tree is a good example of a composite demand. And also, you can talk about a live animal or a cow. A cow can give you skin, it can give you meat, it can give you milk, it can give you uh, ceramic, which is the horn, and the bones. So a lot of things that the cow can bring. So in this case too, cow also represents a composite demand. I hope that is clear. All right, so you have derived demand. Derived demand. This is demand for a commodity that is needed to satisfy other needs. That is, it is not demanded for its own purpose. It is demanded to use to meet other needs of the consumer. All right, that's what is called derived demand. Demand that is born out of the demand for another commodity is called a derived demand. Now, what are the examples of derived demand? We have money. People look for, people, people go about trying to make money, not because they want to chew the money and eat it up, no. They need the money to either buy wares, pay house rent, treat themselves, buy food, all right, travel, do all sorts of things, acquire properties. So the demand for properties and all those I mentioned brings the bank the demand for money. Certificate is another one. You don't go to school to acquire a certificate because you want to have a certificate. The certificate is like a gateway for you to get into your future or something more rewarding. So you acquire a certificate because you need it for something else, not because of the certificate in itself. That is why it's called a derived demand. Transportation as well is meant, the need to move from one place to another brings about the use of vehicles for moving around. Then flour is used to produce bread and other snacks or pastry products. All right, so these are wonderful examples for derived demand. You can see the images that you have there. You have a tank, or they call it tanker, or a tank, a military tank. You have a, an airplane, you have a screwdriver. All these things are demanded because they have, not for their own personal purpose, but for the need of meeting other needs of the desire, or desire of the consumer. That's why they are acquired. That's why they're called the derived demand. Okay, so all I've said so far is something you must, very, you must be very, very attentive to because I'm trying to make sure that you understand the difference between change in demand and change in quantity demanded. Now, these factors as they are, I want to properly divide it into two parts. The first part is the price of the commodity, which is called the own price. And the second part is what all other factors from price of little commodities to period of festival. Now, all these ones we call what we call a change in quantity, sorry, a change in demand, that is the other factors. But the one that will cause a change in demand, a change in quantity demanded, is the own price of the commodity. So I have two parts in these factors. The only one is what change, sorry, price of the commodity, which is own price, and this one will cause change in quantity demanded. And then the other factors will cause change in demand. Please take note. That is what we should take note of. Then, in continuation, weather and climate, or weather or climate, will make us to have a change in demand of a commodity if that weather changes. That is, a period where you have rainy season, people will buy more of umbrella, sweater, rain boots, and clothes that will cover them from cold. But when the weather changes from that to a hot weather or dry season, people will buy less of such commodities, but they will go for things that are lighter, that will give them more air and cold. So that is what we're talking about. So when this weather changes, it affects demand, not the quantity. We're talking about change in demand. So take note of that. The advertising is another factor that will affect demand in the sense that if any product that is being advertised is properly advertised for sure, the demand for that product will rise. And then if anyone that is being advertised but is not done properly, or maybe not, not even advertised at all, the product might not sell as much as the one that is being advertised. So for two commodities that are, being, uh, that are competitive in nature, the one that sells more might be the one that who advertises better and more often. Yes, so increase in advertisement might increase demand, Why a decrease in advertisement will also decrease in demand for the commodity. Now, period of festival is a 
last but not the least because there are many more but these are the ones we have for discussion now this period of festivals as we hear as we have here may be the period of uh, festival for in, in the case of nigeria we have we have easter period we have new year festival period which is august period we have a uh, christmas period new year I also have periods for the muslim celebrations all these periods we have of festivity comes with the increase in demand for some commodities while others also suffer loss of demand so decrease in demand so anyone that the period of festival is favorable to will encounter an increase in demand for them remember i'm just talking about increase in demand not in quantity demanded the only time you talk about quantity demanded increase or decreasing is when you talk about own price as a factor that affects demand that's what you should take note of our next consideration here is when we talk about change in quantity demanded because I have actually tried to make this very clear to you. What, what causes a change in quantity demanded simply is what? A change in the factor called the price of the commodity or own price. When this factor changes, I mean when there's a change, you have either an increasing change or a decreasing change, or you can say positive or negative changes. And of course, so when the price changes, now in this case, when the price of the commodity rises, the quantity demanded for, of that commodity will, what, will fall according to the law of demand, which says the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. So here in this case, what, we, what do we call changing quantity demanded? It is, it is defined as the upward, leftward, or downward, rightward movement along the demand curve. Take note, it is movement along the demand curve not a shift of the demand curve don't misplace these statements the movement along the demand curve is what we refer to as what a change in quantity demanded when did quantity demanded move up or down along the demand curve or moves upwards leftward or rightward downwards along the demand curve this represents a change in quantity demanded it can also be described as a movement along the chain of demand. Yes, you stay correct. The chain of demand is what that demand curve that moves from top left to bottom right. Okay, all of the factors that affect demand, price of the commodity is the only one that can cause a change in quantity demand. So take note of that. The rest factors won't cause what we call change in demand. Now we have two types of change in quantity demanded. Because I told you that changes will either be positive or negative, that gave rise to what the two types of changes in quantity demanded that we have. So what are they? We have an increasing change in quantity demanded, also a decreasing change in quantity demanded. Now, when is demand, uh, quantity demanded increasing? What do we, when does it happen? This is when there is a constant fall in price of the commodity. If you check the graph we have here, the changes started from P1 P2 to P5, meaning that the price is changing downwards. The first change took place at P2, the second change P3, third change P4, and the last P5. So you can see that the price is falling, and that is why the quantity is moving from Q1 to Q5, meaning that as well there's an increase in quantity demanded. Now, what is it? This is the downward rightward movement of the demand curve of demand along the demand curve, all right? So it's also referred as what expansion of demand. You can see that it's a downward on the slope of the demand curve movement, which is the red arrows coming downwards, and then a rightward movement of also the quantities demanded from Q1 to Q5. That's why we define it this way, that the demand curve, when there's an increase in quantity demanded, it is defined as a downward rightward movement of the demand along the demand curve. So that is what we'll talk, what we mean by increase in quantity demanded. Then there's decrease in quantity demanded as well. What does it mean? It represents the upward leftward movement of the demand along the demand curve. Now it is also referred to as what a contraction of demand. If you look at the diagram here, if you use the old one, the previous graph, you can see the same thing. But here you see the changes is now going up with the opposite side. The price rose from P1 to P2, 
and the quantity demanded dropped from Q1 to Q2. It's just an arrow to show you, but actually your quantities will move out from zero to the highest to your right. But when you want to look at the drop, you follow the price tangency between price and quantity demanded to know when there's a drop in demand, in quantity demanded. So yes, this, this diagram shows you a good example of a decrease in quantity demanded from Q1 to Q2. Q2 is a new quantity demanded, while Q1 is a previous quantity demanded. So yes, that is the two types of change in quantity demanded. The next we have here, considering the other factors of demand, is what we refer to as change in demand. Now also, there are two types of change in demand, which is an increasing change in demand and also a decreasing change in demand. But before we move on to that, let's know what the change in demand is. What is a change in demand? A change in demand can be defined as a shift of the demand curve to a new position. Remember, change in quantity demanded says movement along the demand curve, a single demand curve, all right? But in this case, we have two or more demand curves in the same graph. That makes it a change in demand. Now, look at it again. It said a change in demand can be defined as a shift of the demand curve to a new position. So you have two or more demand curve in a graph. It involves a new demand schedule and a new demand curve on the same graph. It shows that even at the same old price, more or less of the commodity can be demanded. Remember this time, the price does not change because the only thing that can cause a change in quantity demanded is what is the price of the commodity, which is what we have discussed earlier on. In this case, when we talk about change in demand, the price remains constant, it doesn't change because this will not cause a change in demand, only a change in quantity demanded. So here, at the same old price, at the same old price, you, you will notice that more or less of that particular commodity will be bought or demanded for. So a change in demand is caused by a change in all other factors affecting demand apart from the price of the commodity. It also has two types, or two, you can divide it into two, Number one is what we call an increase in demand. An increase in demand. What is an increase in demand? This is a rightward shift of the demand curve. A rightward shift of the demand curve. In the case that at the same old price, more of the commodity is demanded for. An increase in demand is caused by a favorable change in all factors affecting demand aside the price of the commodity. So I think this is very clear now. So you know when demand increases, it means that the changes in the factors that affect demand have become favorable to the commodity in question. So there's an increase in demand for it. So you can look at the graph there. You see that there's a, a D1 graph, D1 and graph D2. The D1 tells you that that's the original demand curve. Then the D2 is a new demand curve that shows a shift in demand to the right. That makes it what? A change in demand. Okay, so the next one we have is a decrease in demand. A decrease in demand. This is the leftward shift of the demand curve indicating that at the same old price, less of the commodity is demanded for. That is, for the, commodity can, the, the demand for the commodity falls. Decrease in demand can be caused by an unfavorable factor or change in the factors that affect demand except the price of the commodity. So when these quantities, or sorry, when these commodities experience unfavorable change in the factors that affect them, they have what is called a decrease in demand. You can see that here also we have D1 and D2. D1 is the original demand curve. D2 is the new demand curve shifting to the left of the original one. So a leftward shift of the demand curve from the original demand curve tells us a decrease in demand. It means what? A decrease in demand. Thank you very much for your listening ears. I'm sure that by now you understand more about demand and we're going to touch more about this particular topic. It's not exhaustive. In our next, in our next lesson, we're going to improve on what we know about demand and then introduce supply to you. Remember, we're going to also going to talk about the other laws of demand in that topic in the next class as well as try to input the equilibrium condition 
for demand and supply. So having learned this much, we'll conclude the class with some questions on demand. Let's see how much we can do with that. Thank you. Let's check. Yeah, this one says, goods are said to be in competitive demand when they are what? It's the answer should be when they are substitutes. Remember, we talk about types of demand, we talk about competitive demand, which, which are demand for goods that have close substitutes. So the answer is what? When they are substitutes. A downward sloping curve means that when the, down, when the curve of the, of the demand is downward sloping, what does it represent? What does it mean? A, it said total revenue declines as price is lowered. B, demand falls as output increases. C, demand falls as output falls. C, price must be lower to sell more. That's the truth. If you want to sell more quantities, because the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. So if you want to sell more quantities of your product, you have to lower your price. So D is our answer. The next question, um, okay. A movement along the same demand curve, either upwards or downwards, as a result of change in price implies what? You know, this is what we discussed just now. It implies what? It implies a change in quantity demanded. All right, that's our answer. Okay. Let's take one more before we end the class. Okay. You see, which of the following causes the demand curve to shift to the right? Good. What should be your answer? An increase in the income of the buyer. Remember, we said when the income of the buyer increases, the, con the, con the consumer or in the buyer will buy more goods to enjoy himself more. All right, at this point, we call it a day for this particular lesson. We'll continue very soon with the next lesson that will continue with demand as well as supply. Thank you.